Bang! Neve Knives, I'm Jared, and here we have the Aurora Knife and Tool Truffles. And this thing has a very unique locking mechanism, and I'm very fascinated by it. So what we're going to do is we are going to actually show this knife, taking apart really quick, we're going to show how this thing actually is working in there. On the outside, the way it works is the, the pivot is a button. You push the button, and while pushing the button, it pulls the liner in. Because what there is, there's a little leaf spring in there that's wedged from here to there and then riveted to the liner. So when you push it, it pulls the liner in. And we're gonna take a quick look at what that looks like from the inside. Okay, so let's take a close look at this locking mechanism. Now, you can see it has the liner that rests behind or is squeezed in by the two sets of scales and the back spacer. It also has these uh, press points right here, so it's pressed in and fit in, and then these are you know holding the rest in place. So when you take this off, the thing's not just gonna pop off, you do have to wedge that out. Now, the button is attached to this leaf that's wedged behind here, and it attaches to the button. So when you push that, it acts as a leaf spring, and pulls in this out. You can see it's riveted right there. So this little spring right here, or the, the leaf right there, is riveted to the liner, which pulls it in, which works really good. Now, this little guy right here is a screw holding on the, the pivot collar. Now that screw that I just took out, what it does is it stops this from spinning. So now I can spin this, and then this will pop out. So, right there. And then you can see that little leaf spring attachment right there. So, pretty cool how, that, how the whole thing works. Now, when you open up this, there is a little wire in here that I'm gonna talk about later on. but it's just a little tiny metal wire inside the other side of the pivot. All that does is it stops this from shaking around. That's it, it just stops it from rattling around. So, you know, that's the only function is just to prevent rattle from this, but I think a, a, a gasket would be better or a washer of some sort. I think it would be less fragile and, you know, would be more easy to replace. Also, the, the pivot itself is actually press fit in here, so it's not gonna come out. So when you take it all apart, this part is not just gonna pull out, it, it is press fit inside there. So, the knife is S35VN, or the blade is S35VN, and it is a dual ground tanto with a nice thin hollow grind and a flat grind up here, really good geometry. Titanium handle, titanium mill pocket clip and backspacer. But let's talk about this action. So the detent is nice and crispy. It is a crispy, crispy detent. That thing flies out with authority every time. I mean, it, it, listen to it. It has a nice, even a beautiful sound. So as far as the flipper tab goes, perfect flipping action. When you break that detent, a thing, <laughs> I love the sound of it. It might not be coming over the mic, but it sounds really cool. And it works really, really good. That thing breaks and it snaps out with authority. Now we're gonna talk about this liner because if you look at this liner, this has obviously a lot to do with it because the detent's attached to it. But the whole deployment is nice and open. It's um, a perfect amount of gap for you to reverse flick. It's not super sharp on the edge, but it's not even necessary because you know your your skin like basically wedges right in there and it works really really good. I would say between the flipper tab and the reverse flick they're equally as good and it's completely ambidextrous because of the button lock in the pivot. So because you just use the you just use your pointer finger if you're left-handed, I use my thumb if I'm right-handed because I am right-handed. Um, but it does have a reversible clip, so it's going to be ambidextrous all the way around. Very very cool. Now the only thing is you can't use the thumb flick. <laughs> you can, I mean, you just seen me do it, but it is not easy. You're, you're kind of wedging your finger in there all weird. It's a reverse flicking knife. It is not meant for thumb flicking. Then you have this front flipper. Now, I'm not the biggest fan of this front flipper, but I do think that 
um, I know what will fix it. And we're going to talk about that when we get into the negatives, but it does still work, as you can see. And the detent is so crispy that when it breaks, that thing rockets out with authority. Now, let's look at this liner. Listen to this lockup. This thing locks up tight. Even when you go slow, that thing just yanks it in beautifully. So nice, solid lockup. Very, it feels very robust. No side to side. And I'm putting a lot, a lot of pressure and I'm putting a lot of pressure up and down. This thing is rock solid. And I love that. Um, I love the feeling of that lock bar engaging and really sucking that blade in. Feels very, very solid. Ergonomics, are very nice. The handle is very straightforward. It's kind of simple, but I do like how they canted this angle down right here and then straight down here because in the palm, it just nestles nice, nicely in the hand. And, and you know, you can really feel that it was designed around a hand, you know, the way the hand works. So, you know, you, you do have a lot of leverage moving forward, doing, you know, any type of cutting purposes, you're gonna be just fine with this handle. Now, as far as the geometry goes in cutting, this thing cuts like a champ. It is definitely a great slicer. You know, it's a nice deep hollow grind. It is a dual grind. So, you know, it, it passes through really, really good. Now the utility cutting or, let's talk about the secondary tip. Using the secondary tip, it works good. So you're gonna be able to use the secondary tip for the things you use secondary tips for you know possibly light duty utility cuts and then you know getting in between seams on boxes and things like that it'll work great for that as far as the primary tip goes this is it does drop down a little bit but it's mostly a straight back so in order to get to the tip like a lot of tontos you have to lift your elbow way up so you're going to lose all the leverage into a utility cut now as long as it's a light duty utility cut you'll be just fine and as long as you're not doing repeated cuts you'll be fine you know but just to, to do you know a quick utility cut you'll be just fine but you're not gonna get maximum amount of leverage and be doing precision cuts with this tip. Um, but that's fine, you know. Um, a lot of EDC just relies around one cut, so. Um, as far as the button goes with the drop, it does drop straight down. I should have brought that up in the action. I mean, it's very, very smooth. Just like a drop, you know, just like uh, any other button lock, like, you know, it's free flowing. You can use the button to swing it because once you pull it in, the detent is attached to the liner, just like, you know, other uh, liner locks. So as far as the price and release date, these the Kickstarter is going to start August 2nd. And the Kickstarter, the early bird special for the Kickstarter will be $170. That is such a good deal. Now, if you wait till afterwards, it'll be $189, which is still a phenomenal deal. I think that this is well worth that. I think that's an amazing price. So I'm really happy to see that they were able to price this so well. So $170 or $189. And also I'm going to link a thing down in the description for you guys to uh, keep up to date with this. It's a newsletter from Aurora Knife and Tool, which also has a YouTube channel. I'm gonna link that as well. But you can, um, you can follow the newsletter or you know sign up to the newsletter that way you can keep up to date with all the information that comes out or you know the release date and just you know basically any information moving forward but uh, also check out their youtube channel they they do other stuff on there as well that you can go and check out that's edc related now before we get into the negatives i do want to say you know the fit the finish everything feels really nice on there there's a nice landing pad right there for your finger um, you know, a lot of things are really, really good on this, but I do have a couple negative things. So let's talk about the negatives. So my biggest negative is this front flipper. Now, while the front flipper does work just fine, I think the reason why I'm having an issue with it, it it's two things. One, the detent is nice and strong, which I do not want that changed. I love the detent on this thing. But what could happen is, is that this front flipper was just up a little tiny bit higher, which it has plenty of room back here for, as you can see there's plenty of room to make this a little bit bigger it wouldn't hurt anything to make it slightly bigger that would make it to where you'd have a little bit more leverage up higher which would break the detent easier you know the closer you are to the detent 
or the closer you are, closer you are to the pivot, the harder it's going to be to break a detent. The farther you are away, the better. So just even moving a little bit will change a lot. Now the next thing is they did the right um, right kind of jimping. You know, it's good jimping, but they stopped it early. So you see how it doesn't go all the way up to the top. So this little top corner right here is slippery. While this is nice and catchy, this is slippery. So what they should do is go up and around the front flubber. The jibby should go all the way up to the top and then around just a little bit. That way when your finger's up there, you you know you have gripping all the way around that corner and this corner is not slippery. And I found myself slipping off of it a few times. Now once you get used to it, yeah, it's fine, but it could just be better. And as good as this action is with the flipper tab and the reverse flick, you know, it just feels like the front flipper's lagging behind just a little bit because it has the potential to be so good. That's my point. So front flipper, just a little tiny bit taller. And I think that would massively improve the action on the front flipper because it's already decent, but it could be so good. Um, and the other deployments are 10 out of 10. So the next negative thing would be um, well, sharp and and plunge grind, I'd like to see that be a little bit bigger. Now, it's okay because, you know, they did do the right kind of plunge grind, but it's a little small. So, you know, they did the right idea where they started the plunge grind and it rapidly drops down. It doesn't taper all the way down to the edge. It does stop early. And then it allows you to get like, I don't know, two good sharpenings in before you hit the plunge grind right here. So when you sharpen this steel off right here, eventually this steel right here is going to be all gone. And it's going to hit the plunge grind. So I would say just extend it out just slightly. Give yourself like two or three more sharpenings because depending on how low you sharpen your edge angle to, and a lot of people like to sharpen their edge angles to low angles. So, you know, if you try to put a low angle edge on here, you're not gonna, you're gonna get maybe one sharpening out of this for his plunge run, maybe two. But if it was slightly bigger, you'd have like five. So I would say, just barely. Now you could also move it back this way, move this plunge back here, you know, that would open it up too. But it seems like the easiest way would be just to make this slightly bigger. The exact same style that it is right now, exactly the same, just slightly widened up or this slightly deeper. Now I'm not gonna bring up this clip not fitting perfectly. I think they might be trying to also do like a wire clip or something. I'm not sure if that's true or not, but that's just what it looks like because this is usually how wire clip uh, deep carry clips look. So maybe they're trying to make it um, uh, changeable, you know, where you can change it to a wire clip. I have no idea if that's true or not. Maybe it originally was supposed to be a wire clip. I have no idea, but it doesn't fit perfectly, uh, but I'm sure that'll go away because it is a prototype. So everything's subject to change. Now the clip, the clip works great and out of the pocket. I do notice that it is kind of, you know, only on one side, as you can see there, there's a little space on the other side underneath it. I'm not sure if that is to help it go in one-handed or something. That's the only thing I could think of. It does work pretty good. It's not bad, but I almost wonder if it was, you know, um, touching all the way across on the pad, if that would be even smoother. Um, but it wasn't bad though. The clip works great and it is reversible and being an ambidextrous knife, that's nice. Now, as far as other negatives go, the next thing I'm gonna say is, is not that big of a deal, but when this thing's taken apart, there's a little square wire in here. And all it does is it stops these parts from rattling. That's it, nothing else, just stops it from, from rattling around. I would say use a rubber gasket or a rubber washer. That way, if anything happens to that wire in the future, you can easily replace it. You can go down to any hardware store and replace a, a gasket or a washer. So I, I would say do that and they're easy to get. It's affordable. It shouldn't change the price any or anything like that. And they're very, very durable that way. I'm not sure how durable that metal wire is. I'm sure it's fine, but man, it can be so much better if it's just a, a rubber gasket of some sort. Um, other than that, now the the parts. I know some people are going to argue. You know, the the more parts the more chances something can go wrong. And that is a good argument, you know, because there's always a chance, even with the most simplest designs and simplest tools, there's always a chance of something breaking or going wrong, right? It's just life, right? So the more parts you have, the more likely you have something to happen. And this does have a few parts. It does, you know, come with a few extra parts. But I don't think it's, you know, to an extreme level to really worry about it. 
Um, but I feel like I'm going to have that argument in the comments, so I, I want to address it. I don't think that this thing, you know, the leaf spring on here, I would say it'd be smart maybe from the company to possibly buy extras just in case. I don't think it's weak by, you know, in any way, but I'm just saying, you know, because all it does is just, you know, pull the liner back in. There's not no, there's no pressure applied to it when you're using the knife or anything like that. The only pressure is just from the button. So all it does is pull in the liner, but just in case, you know, maybe that's something, you know, he, they, they should maybe think about getting extras just in case in the future, if a couple of them do break, um, which I don't think that's going to happen, but it's shown better to be safe than sorry. All in all, I think this thing is pretty awesome. I love how innovative it is. I love seeing new locking mechanisms. It's very, very well done. It's very well priced and it has a damn good look to it. It almost has like somewhat of a sharp by designs look to it, which you guys should know. I love the way sharp by designs look. Um, but you know, it, it's definitely in, in its own um, realm. You know, I'm not trying to say anything was, you know, you guys know what I mean, but it's awesome. It's really awesome. It works really good. It functions so good, so crisp. It is fidgety. This is a fidget beast. Like I could sit here and flick this thing all day long because it is that fidgety. And you know, and it's also very useful. But work hard, stay tough. You guys know society's relying on you. Until next time. Peace.